So electronics are in and everything's working. As I showed you before, the the throttle is working just fine. But now my shirt's caught in it. So the throttle's working fine. And the steering's now working fine as well. I put the links in. The short one on one side, the longer one on the opposite side appropriately. Next I'm moving on to assembling the wheels. It's a three-piece system with an inner ring um, and two outers, four screws on each wheel with the nut on the back. So I'm going to get them clipped out and trimmed and then uh, get all the parts together and go from there. So now I'm building these three-piece wheels. You get the center ring and then these other two pieces that go on the outside. And they get, and they get, and they get secured by those four screws. You see the holes there, the four screw holes. So I take this ring and push it halfway through this um, this wheel. This is not the easiest speed process, but push about two thirds of the way through. Then what I'll do is tilt it and pop this piece of rubber up over the bottom half so that it's sitting up in there on an angle. So you see the rubber is up over that bottom well now the rubber is up over the bottom you push that on in there and then it kinda just pops over the top ring and you get it evened out it's a pretty stiff tire, so once you get the ring in there, it'll kind of seat itself, no problem. Then you have to make sure you put the appropriate ring on each side. They're grooved. There's a small groove in there um, showing you where to place it on the groove inside the wheel. So you can see that tiny little groove right in there. Um, So then you line up the holes and the groove and just push it right on there. And then that gets secured by screws. Of course, you put the rear in for, as well. You also have to be sure that you don't mix the front and the rear wheels up. There are different configurations. Um, I don't think they even mesh too well, but just make sure you put the right wheel with the right wheel parts. So that's one front wheel. Do this again, stick this middle ring halfway through. Definitely not the easiest thing to do with the stiffness of this rubber. But if you stick it in there on an angle, you pretty much can just turn it and pop that rubber over. So once you got that rubber in there, it's pretty easy to push the other side in and kind of pop the rubber, rubber rubber over and get it seated. It almost falls right into place once you get the ring in. So I'm going to get this other, um, other three wheels put together and get them screwed again and get them mounted on the vehicle. So I got the wheels done and I went ahead and inserted the plastic bearings in the wheels. As I said before, if, I, if you plan on running this vehicle in any sort of conditions, um, heavy conditions, dirt, anything, I would put bearings in there. But since this is sort of an exhibition vehicle, these plastic bearings will be alright. Um, I don't plan on putting this through too much, too much stress at all, so they'll be okay in this. Um, also got the rear wheels done. They don't require bearings or plastic bearings, but they do get these little adapters that fit on there to help turn the wheel. Those get mounted on the rear wheel by a pin. Just a regular little st a straight pin. Pull these body clips out, 
stick your pin in there and this slides over then your wheel attaches to that front wheel nothing special it just gets put on to those plastic bearings or bushing or uh, metal bearings whichever you have in there and then that slides right over the the shaft right there and spins freely since it's a rear wheel drive vehicle so I'm going to get the wheels put on along with these adapters and the pins that take